Hello students. Today we are going to start a new chapter which is having a correlation with the chapter which we have studied last year. Can you guess which is that chapter? Yes, it's the states of matter. Last year in that particular chapter, we have studied about gaseous state of matter where we have discussed about Boyle's law, Charles' law, Avogadro's law which describes the behavior of gas and we have derived ideal gas equation. We also discussed about the deviation of the ideal gas to real gas behavior. We also talked about kinetic molecular theory of gases. This year we have to go with other two states of matter that is a solid state as well as the liquid state. So this first chapter we have got in our syllabus is the solid states of matter. Now, when I talk about solid state, what comes into your mind first? Everybody will be having a definite picture in your mind. It can be a book, a table or your laptop. Any solid object picture comes in your mind automatically. But all these objects will be having some similar characteristic properties. So let us discuss some of the characteristic properties of solids. So, some properties of solids you have already studied in lower class like definite mass, volume, shape and all. Apart from that, the other characteristic properties of solids are all solids will be having a very short intermolecular distance. That is, the distance between the particles are very very less. The particles are closely packed. Hence, these particles are having strong intermolecular forces of attraction. Therefore, these solids are incompressible and rigid. The particles are fixed in their position. Hence, the type of movement we can exhibit in these cases are vibrational motion. So, let us once again tell the properties of solids are definite mass, volume and shape very short intermolecular distance, strong intermolecular force of attraction, incompressible and rigid, they are fixed in their position as well as the vibrational motion exhibited by these solid particles. Now let's move on to the types of solids. Based on the nature of the particles, we have got true solids and pseudo solids. Two solids are also known as crystalline solids, whereas pseudo solids are known as amorphous solids. From this picture, it's very well clear that in two solids, in two solids, the particles are well orderly arranged. See how beautiful it is. Whereas in case of amorphous solid, the particles are not orderly arranged. You can see the irregularity here. This is one remarkable difference between these two solids. Other than that, we have got many other differences which we are going to discuss now. The difference between the crystalline and amorphous solids. The shape which we already discussed in previous slide. Crystalline solids are having definite shape whereas amorphous solids are irregular in shape. The melting point. In crystalline solids, we can see a sharp melting temperature. That means at a particular temperature, all the intermolecular force of attraction between the particles will get broke and they will split out to form in a liquid shape. Whereas in case of amorphous, this change is happening in a range of temperature because the particles are not orderly arranged. Hence, the breaking of the intermolecular force will not happen at a particular temperature. It will happen in a range of temperature. The other differences which can be seen in these two solids are, it is the edge cutting difference, the heat of fusion, the nature and the order. Let's see that. Edge cutting surface. When you cut a crystalline solid, you can see that a smooth and a plain cut surface is seen. Whereas in case of amorphous, it is irregular. 
you might have experienced like when you cut an eraser which is amorphous in nature how much irregularities or the sharpness are seen in the cut areas heat of fusion that is the amount of heat absorbed by a crystalline object to convert into another state will be a definite amount because they are having sharp melting point and their arrangement is regular whereas in amorphous solid this heat of fusion is not definite the next property is nature nature we can see that crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature whereas amorphous solids are isotropic in nature i shall discuss this point in the coming slides the last notable difference is the order of the arrangement in which we can see that in crystalline solids we have got long range order of arrangement and in amorphous solid it is a short range here are some examples of crystalline solids ion diamond ice salt you can list out any examples which will be following all the characteristic properties of a solid which we had discussed in the previous slide whereas in amorphous solids the examples are butter rubber glass wax which will not have definite melting point we can even say that these are existing in rubbery state or glassy state so the shape let me again once again explain by taking silica as the example the silica or the silicon dioxide can exist in two allotropic form one is its crystalline form which is a quartz other one is amorphous form of silica which we call it as glass in silica crystalline quartz it is well orderly arranged you can see how beautifully the particles are packed the silicon and oxygen atoms whereas in amorphous form the silicon and oxygen atoms are not arranged in an ordered way that is a glass form of silica now here again when you cut a uh, crystalline object we can find a smooth and a plain surface in the cut place whereas in case of an amorphous we can see an irregular cut area here comes the nature anisotropy so crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature that is what i have mentioned in the previous slide let me explain but before going to that first you should know what are anisotropic properties it is been noted that some physical properties is it some physical properties like conductivity refractive indexes these properties when measured in different directions we are getting different values not in all solids in some solids so those properties which changes its values depending on the direction of the measurement such properties are known as anisotropic properties conductivity refractive indexes are the examples of anisotropic properties and the solid in which we can get different values for these properties when measured in different directions such solids are known as anisotropic solid and our crystalline solids are anisotropic have you got it no see this figure so in the first figure we can see that it is a picture of a crystalline orderly arranged solid here in the direction a if you have measure sorry in the direction of a if you measure the properties like refractive index or conductivity we will get a particular value which will not match with the value if you measure the same property in the direction of b in the b direction when you measure the values are changing why it is because in the direction a you can find that the small particles are all orderly arranged in the left side of the arrow mark and the big particles are arranged in the right side of the arrow mark whereas in direction b the both particles are present in the both side of the arrow mark therefore the properties like refractive index conductivity all will have a different values when the direction changes depending on the type of particles present it is because of the orderly arrangement of the crystalline solids whereas in the second picture you can see that it is an amorphous crystal amorphous solid where the particles are not having any regular arrangement 
Hence, if you measure the properties like refractive index or conductivities in any direction, the values will be in a range. They don't have anything sharp. They have got only a range of values. So that range will cover in any direction it is measured. That is why we tell that amorphous solids are isotropic in nature. So here you can see that the particles are both the big particles and small particles are present in the both side of arrows in the both directions. Hope it is clear to you. Now another one interesting property of amorphous solids is that they are also termed as supercooled liquids. This is one important give reasoning question they may ask in our panel exam. Amorphous solids are called as super cool liquids. Why? That is because like liquids, these solids are having a tendency to flow. Not suddenly, but over time when forces are applied. So when you are subjecting to, when, when these solids are subjected to forces, different type of temperatures and pressures and all, these particles will slowly, slowly move down. And hence you can see that they will be a, these particles are thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. So examples like some plastics, or rubber, butter, etc. Such type of flow is not observed in crystalline solids. That is why we can find that the window panes of the old buildings, which is a glass, when they are subject to continuous temperature changes, the rain and all, as time goes on, the thick bottom part will be thicker and the top part will be thinner. It is because of this flowing nature. That is why amorphous solids are also called as supercooled liquids. Now, let us go on to the classification of crystalline solids based on intermolecular force of attraction. So, we are going to classify crystalline solids based on the force of attraction between their particles. Yes, we have got four types in this category. The one is ionic solid. Second one is covalent or network or atomic solid. Third one is metallic solid. And the last one we have got is our molecular solids. So, based on the intermolecular force of attraction, crystalline, that is the orderly arranged solids, are classified into four categories. Ionic solid, covalent solids, metallic solids and molecular solids. Let us now discuss the properties. Ionic solids. From the name itself, you can make out the constant particles will be cations and anions. That is, the positively and negatively charged ions are the particles in these solids. Then, what kind of force are existing between these particles? Yes, it is the strong electrostatic force of attraction. Have you got it, students? So, we just listen here. Cations and anions in ionic solids are held together by strong electrostatic force of attraction or that is another name of ionic bond and these solids are hard brittle with high melting and boiling point another one interesting thing we can note in these kind of solids is that students the interesting thing that we can notice here is that they are very poor conductor of electricity in solid state in solid state they will not conduct electricity whereas in case of liquid state that means when they start to move that is in the dissolution state they will conduct electricity due to the presence of ions you can cite any examples in this ionic solids like sodium chloride zinc sulfide magnesium oxide or the examples which you are doing analyzing in the practical lab salt analysis you are analyzing the cations and anions present in that all those comes under this particular ionic crystalline solids. Then the second one, covalent, atomic or networking solids. Now, from the name itself you can make out covalent solid. 
That means a covalent bond is existing between the constant particles. Now, what are the constant particles over here? They are the non-metallic atoms. So, the atoms are the constant particles which are held by covalent bond and they are also known as giant molecules because they form a networking structure. They are hard, brittle and have high melting and boiling point. And they are usually insulators except in the case of graphite. Graphite structure, all of you have studied last year, right students? Yes, yeah, graphite is having a mobile electron. Hence, graphite is a covalent but insulate. It's a covalent but a conducting crystal. Diamond, quartz, silicon carbide are the examples of normal covalent solids. Structure of diamond also you have studied last year. Right students? Yes, in the chapter group 14. Then comes the metallic solids. So metallic solids, when you hear the name itself, you can make out the examples coming under this category. Yes, all metals come under metallic solids. So in metallic solids, what are the constant particles, students? Yes, the constant particles are the metal atoms. In metal atoms, it is to be noted that the valence electron, that means the electrons present in the outermost shell of these metals, are loosely bound towards the nuclear charge. Hence, they are free enough to move. So they will be moving. So the particles are positively charged metal ions and the sea of free mobile electrons. So the valence electrons are moving from one end to next end in metallic solids. So the force of attraction is strong metallic bond. And as you all know that all metallic solids are highly malleable and ductile in nature. That is, we can make thin sheets out of it as well as thin wires out of these metallic solids. And the interesting thing to be noticed that they are good conductors of heat and electricity because of the presence of this free movement of electrons. Okay, so examples you can list out any examples which are coming under the metal category like iron, copper, zinc, sodium, many examples are there. Okay, so the constant particles are positively charged metal ions and their free valence electrons. Now we are moving on to the last category of crystalline solids, which is known as molecular solids. And in molecular solids, the constant particles are molecules, they are soft with low melting point. Now here, the molecular solids are again classified based on the binding force of the molecular solids. So based on the binding force of molecular solids, they are again classified into non-polar molecular solids, polar molecular solids and hydrogen bonded molecular solids. So listen students, in molecular solids, the constant particles are molecule. Each particle is a molecule. Each molecule are joined or binded by different kinds of forces. Based on that force, we are again classifying the molecular solids into non-polar, polar and hydrogen bonded. Let's see the examples under this. So the first is the non-polar molecular solids. Here the constant particles are atoms or molecules. Atom means it belongs to the monoatomic molecules like our noble gas elements, helium, argon. They are gas but when converts into solid, solid helium, solid argon. Or you take a non-polar non -polar diatomic molecules like solid hydrogen, solid iodine, I2, all comes under these cases where they are being held by weak dispersion, dispersion force or London forces. So in these cases, hydrogen solid, iodine solids or helium or argon in solid cases, each molecules are joined or attached by a weak dispersion force. Is it clear? Then the next one is polar molecular solids. Here the particles are polar, polar molecules like hydrochloric acid, solid sulfur dioxide, etc. That is, each polar covalently 
connected molecules like hydrochloric acid is linked to the next hydrochloric acid by a strong dipole dipole interaction so listen students each particle is hcl one hcl is connected to next, next hcl by what kind of force strong dipole dipole interaction so particles are molecules containing polar covalent bond now the third category the hydrogen bonded which have already studied last year in the chapter chemical bonding so here you can see that here the particles are molecules containing polar covalent bonds between hydrogen and oxygen fluorine or nitrogen the more electronegative atoms like ice solid ammonia etc so the binding force are here is a strong hydrogen bond so hydrogen bond is existing between hydrogen atom of one molecule and the electronegative atom of another molecule of same type is it clear so once again it has summarized this crystalline solids based on the intermolecular force of attraction and the constant particles we are classifying into four molecular solids ionic crystals network crystals and metallic crystals molecular solids the constant particles are molecules and based on the intermolecular force of attraction it is again classified into nonpolar polar and hydrogen bond in nonpolar the particles are what diatomic molecules of nonpolar covalent bond in polar the particles are diatomic molecules of polar covalent bond in hydrogen it is hydrogen bonded with more electronegative atoms then in ionic crystals the particles are the ions and the force is electrostatic force of attraction in third one network or the atom uh, covalent crystals the particles are non metallic atoms and the bond is I uh, covalent bond whereas in case of metallic crystals it is the metal atoms metal ions metal ions and the mobile electrons which are joined by strong metallic bond so here is the last slide of today's session which is clearly giving you the idea about it, the type the structural particles intermolecular force of attraction the properties and examples of the crystalline solids so this uh, table is very much useful for you to attempt some one mark questions in a theory as well as if at all in the competitive exams they may ask so they can ask from the given examples which comes under polar molecules so you can see that the examples here so examples are clearly noted out cited over here go through all these examples under each categories okay so first column is a type what type of what type of crystalline solids we are having and in second column we can see it is the uh, second column you can see the particles of each type okay in third column it is the type of forces that existing between the particles so they can ask that what kind of force is existing in ionic crystal or they may ask what type of force is existing in a nonpolar molecular crystals or what type of force is existing in helium solid helium atom in solid helium atom what kind of crystals will exist so it is a dispersion force existing so you should prepare yourself in any way around and in the fourth column you can see the typical properties of it and the last columns are examples so you have to get well trained yourself for these questions so we shall wind up today's session and meet you soon thank you